Alpha team report. Still nothing. You lost both teams? Get a grip on this operation, Heather. That's bored. Read like the SF. Sir, I need more time. We have no time. Are you going to give that order or not? Sir, please. You are too naive to see the truth. There's no bringing in Bourne. He will defend his police officers. Listen to police officers' commands, listen to what we tell you, and just stop. The nation needs to realize that when we tell you to do something, do it. And if you're wrong, you're wrong. If you're right, then the courts will figure it out. We don't get to take the we enforce it. But at the end of the day, each and every member should go home safe. Sometimes the use of force is necessary. You need to comply with the police officer the way the system was meant to be. Comply with the orders of police officers. Resisting arrest is a real and dangerous crime. Nonpartisan liberty for all. I'm your host, Dave Bourne, and it is whatever day it is, Tuesday. <laughs> I'm like, what day is it? Tuesday, December 13th, 2016. And we're coming to you live from Las Vegas. I'm trying to fuck with the levels. The last couple shows was too loud. I got to a point where my sound was fucking perfect. And then that was a while ago. And I don't know what happened. And then now it's either too low or it's too high. And I don't want it to be definitely don't want it to be too high because if it's too low, you can always go in there and edit it and compress it or whatever or, um, you know, increase the um, there's ways to increase the volume on it and stuff in in a mix. But once you get it too high, you, there's really nothing you can do with it. But right now. It seems like it's too low, and I don't really want to fuck too much with it, but let me do this real quick. Okay, I think we're all right. That should be good. Uh, So thank you for tuning in to Nonpartisan Liberty for All. We're on... Weeknights, Tuesday through Thursday, now at our new time, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock Eastern, on the Nonpartisan Liberty for All Media and Radio Network, which now runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you can listen live on Spreaker.com and NonpartisanLibertyForAll.com. And to the archives immediately following the show on Spreaker, YouTube, Twitter, Tumblr, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and iTunes. On Nonpartisan Liberty for All, we promote self-ownership and the ideas of true freedom and liberty, meaning being able to do whatever you want, as long as you respect the freedom of others and don't directly interfere with their freedom, exposing government for what it is, a mafia based on extortion that rules without consent by threat of force and violence. So tonight we are sort of going to revisit uh, part of a topic, but we're also going to talk about something else that's uh, related to that. So last week we talked about free markets, and one of the things I had brought up was the Zeitgeist movies and what they called economic resource economy. And I guess that's a name that they coined. Um, Peter Joseph, who directed those movies, tried to copyright it, I found out since then. So I assume he coined that name. I thought it was an actual, you know, some economist actually came up with it. So I talked a little about the Zeitgeist movies, but we were uh, running out of time. So I kind of went through it really quick. And I didn't get to a lot of things. And then what I had noticed uh, was along with the movies being like totally out of whack where 
you're getting one kind of political presentation or one sort of view in the first movie and uh, parts of the second movie, because there's three of them, you're um, also, it, it also compares to or is a lot similar to what the UN is trying to do with their 2030 agenda, which really originally was Agenda 21. Then they wrote a document that was, I can't re- recall the entire name of it, but it was something two fif- 2015 and beyond. And now this is their uh, rewrite of that. That actually had more information in it as far as they were more blunt or just blatant in what they were saying in that document because I read that. I read both of them. Um, I kind of skimmed through. Well, I read it mostly, but I skimmed through a little of it, but I mostly read it. The uh, the newest one, which is 33 pages, but the original one was a lot longer. At least it seemed like it. it, it maybe it was smaller type <laughs> because that took a while to read. And they were more detailed in what they were trying to do. And I talked about it on the air after I had read it. And um, I believe I talked recently about the UN, about this document. So what we're going to do today, uh, there's uh, some new information that I have. And what we're going to do is kind of compare the two and how really the zeitgeist movies and the zeitgeist movement which started in um 2007 was the first movie the last one i believe was 2011 they were also associated with the venus project but i guess they had a falling out and that's where a lot of this stuff comes from but i don't know what happened to this guy uh peter joseph as far as his views and how he totally changed his views so we're going to be talking about all of that a lot of information to get to, so um, I'm going to get right to it. But just want to mention that we're uh, we're happy to hear from you if you'd like to call in. Uh, phone number 702-470-7664. That's 702-470-7664. Or you can Skype in. It sounds a lot better, well, if you have a good microphone at least, <laughs> at Nonpartisan Liberty for All. That's uh, Nonpartisan Liberty for All, one word on Skype. And you can check us out at NonpartisanLibertyForAll.com. And that has all of our links to all of our Facebook pages and other social media, the contact information if you forget the phone number or the Skype username. It has a bunch of articles. Uh, I call them articles slash blogs uh, that I've written. I still haven't finished my... Um, drug series where i i started a uh series a written series on the drug war and why we should go back to how things were before the 1920s and i think i did five or six parts and I, i definitely need to get back to that I also have finished my first draft of my Declaration of Independence uh, 2, where I'm basically declaring my independence from the government. And it goes beyond that, of course. So once that is finished and I have a final draft of that, I'm going to post it on all the social media, on the website. I'll read it on the show. And I'm going to go to all of the sites that you can sign petitions. And hopefully, people will actually sign it. I don't know. It de- it depends on, you know, if you want to sign it, that's great. If you don't, and I would think that most people wouldn't. I mean, people seem scared of anything that, because one thing I, I, I mentioned self-defense. and. I noticed that my page, and I don't, I don't want to get into a long conversation on this because I want to get right into uh, uh, the topic since I have so much information to go over. But my page uh, called NPLFA presents the noncompliance movement backed by self-defense. 
it's my newest page, but it's been around for a long time now, and I have like 13 likes compared to my main page, uh, my nonpartisan Liberty for All page, which it's like stuck at like between 425 and 430 um, because I keep losing people, but then I keep gaining people. It's weird. It's like one week I'll gain a couple people. Then next week I'll lose people. Then I'll gain people. It just keeps going back and forth. Like I can't get any further because I keep losing people. If I didn't lose anybody, I'd probably be up to like, I don't know, maybe, maybe a thousand by now. I mean, well, maybe not that high, but at least 800, um, which for me is, is huge. Um, it's, I know that's nothing for the normal person, but you know, for, for me, that that's a big thing, but because I keep losing people, um, I don't know if it's like a post or they're just like, maybe I'm not posting enough. Cause I have those times where I go through, I, I don't post for a while. I mean, there's always posts regarding the show cause it automatically posts the show, but I, I don't know if I post enough because I get busy with the show and uh, researching information and watching YouTube videos. That's my biggest research tool now is YouTube videos. Um, and you can't 100% rely on those. So you have to watch multiple videos, check your sources and validate them and all that stuff as well. So like for this, um, I watched interviews with... Uh, Peter Joseph, of course, and I watched the Zeitgeist movies. I read the document from the UN, and then I watched some uh, videos on the uh, or listened to some videos on the UN, uh, their 2030 agenda. So I, uh, I put a lot of time into it because I watched the Zeitgeist Zeitgeist movies. There are three of them, and one of them's really long, multiple times as well because I wanted to go over it for stuff I missed because I don't get this whole thing so I guess we'll just start here since um I'm probably going to be all over the place with this because there's just so much to cover um and what I usually do is and I recommend this for anybody that does radio is do an outline um I mean, do whatever works best for you, but I recommend an outline because you don't ever want to write things out and just regurgitate them. You know, I, I do that for my intro, but that's like the intro, you know, but when you're on radio, you want to sound like you're just talking, you know, it's free flow, but at the same time, you want to make sure you cover all the points that you want to cover. So it's like a speech, same thing where people have index cards where they don't want to, um, although, you know, of course, politicians have the uh, teleprompters and they read the exact speech. But, you know, usually what you do for, I guess, uh, normal people is you do index cards and do a speech that way. So then you don't sound like, you know, you're stiff and just reading from something. But I guess if you're a politician, a good one, you're a good actor. So you know how to uh, do that stuff. So anyway, Peter Joseph, um, he supposedly made the first movie as like, like it wasn't serious in that he didn't expect it to go anywhere. He kind of put it together. He violated a bunch of copyrights, he had said, and it just it, it took off. And if you have just seen that movie, and I don't know how many people have just seen the first Zeitgeist movie, and that's all you th you've you seen, you think he's like some big libertarian. I mean, I would. Because in that movie, they talk about a couple of things. Um, they talk about religion and kind of knock uh, religion as far as it being, and Bill Maher did the same research and came up with the same stuff, that Jesus is based off of like a hundred other gods that came before him. It's all the same story, and it came from the Zodiac and whatever. So he talks about that. The biggest thing, though, is he talked about 
and blamed it essentially on the government. And th- that was a, a huge um, thing, you know, to come out and do that. And not a lot of people have made movies about, you know, 9-11 like uh, he did. I mean, there are an, a certain amount, but I mean that got the attention that uh he did and then he did something else too that was um i can't remember the other part that he did but i mean it was anti-government he criticized uh the political parties pretty much being the same and all of that stuff you know false flags um i think he did a little history on that it's just kind of everything's kind of flow uh, kind of flows into each other cuz in the second one he half of it was the same type thing too so he did that so if you watch that movie you'd think okay this guy's a libertarian and he even said in an interview that he's a former libertarian you don't hear too many people that are former lib- libertarians unless they're anarchists or whatever or which I had mentioned in a conversation with somebody that if you're a libertarian, a true libertarian, there's no difference between a voluntarist or an anarchist or whatever, because if you believe in the non-aggression principle, which is the foundation of libertarianism, you can't believe in government because if you're against aggression, that's what government is based off of if you're against the use of force. So that's where I remember doing an interview. I'm not going to say who it is, but he said that he was, you know, against aggression, but he wasn't, you know, an anarchist or uh, he didn't know what he was, but he he was like a libertarian, but he wasn't, you know, and he didn't, he wanted a government. So I don't know. Um, he ended up unfriending me later, so fuck him. But anyways, people that kind of say that in the, the word libertarian has been bastardized. You have a libertarian party and that's just in itself like an oxymoron. I mean, to have a, a libertarian party, but that's a whole nother thing. But you'd at least think he's, you know, a libertarian in the sense of the same people in the libertarian party at minimum. So he does that movie. Then he does part two, which is a uh, addendum. The first one's just called Zeitgeist. So in that one, he starts off with, he talks about the monetary system. And it's really pissing me off. I can't think of the other thing that he talked about in the first movie because I remember forgetting and then remembering again and I didn't fucking jot it down. Um, But... He um he did the second movie with the whole beginning. Uh, he also said taxes are are uh, slavery. If you pay taxes, you know that's slavery as well. In the first movie, which will make sense a, a lot of sense later, or will uh, be looked at in a different context because he says other things are slavery later, but. So in the in the second movie, he starts off talking about the monetary system, you know, talks about the Fed, fractional reserve banking, you know, all the stuff that I'm against and every libertarian I know um, or anarchist or I don't like labels of people know that. But anybody who believes in true freedom, uh, I would say or my definition of true freedom, would be against. They're against the Fed and the, uh, you know, private banks printing money and fiat currency and fractional reserve banking and all of that stuff because they're able to rig the economy that way. Um, One of the ways uh, that they're able to do that at least. So he talks about that. And then about an hour in, and then he talks about other stuff later too, 
Um, so before I get to this this part, but he goes back to, you know, knocking the politicians and the parties and um, other stuff as well that, um, you know, libertarian based uh, things, you know, about government that he's he's um, criticizing government. So, you know, again, you'd think, OK, this guy is, you know, uh, a libertarian. Until you get to the part where he brings in this fucking nut. And I did some I'm very minimal research on him. I just looked at Wikipedia because really he's kind of irrelevant to what I'm talking about. So that's really all I needed. But this uh, Jacques Fresco guy who's like 94 now who started this Venus group, which with him and I, it says like his partner, I don't know if he married her or whatever. And she's a lot younger than him. She's not bad looking actually. Um, I don't know how he got her. Maybe she uh, fell in love with his warped mind, but he, um, so he essentially brings up this whole resource-based economy thing. And in the resource-based economy that he's talking about, or that he, uh, I guess they kind of invented somewhat. There was a, another guy that uh, Ken Shorjan, who's going to be on tomorrow, um, who comes on to talk about geopolitics and the economy, uh, brought up this other guy's name to me. That uh, And I looked him up, but I didn't really go into that much detail. But he had a similar kind of thing, but he was a lot um, older from a different time. I think he was born in the late 1800s or something. Um, anyway, but besides that, I, I don't know that there's anybody who had brought that up before this whole resource based economy thing. Um, but, and supposedly Peter Joseph coined this. So I don't know at what point Peter Joseph met this guy. And then it seems like he totally either changed his views somehow or was, paid to change his views or threatened to change his views. I don't know because he was, you know, with the nine 11 shit. I mean, he went into a lot of detail and he had a lot of good points. And yes, there's been other movies um, that have been about nine 11, but I don't know. I mean, some people get scared easy. Um, I, I don't know. But so he, this resource-based economy is based upon the whole idea that everything is free. Oh, I know the other thing he talked about was the UN. Um, or... Was I saying he led to the UN agenda? No, I think he even knocked the UN. Anyway, and then he kind of became a, a like them and started following their plans, I guess. Uh, but what what this whole thing was based on was it was based on two things mainly one technology that they could do everything technology everything with technology basically almost everything and resources so technology resources and everything being free so essentially people would work for free and this would be the whole world and this is where it gets into the similar things that they were trying to do with agenda 21 is they would and he can't explain how they would do this but all the resources all the world resources basically would be given away for free people would work for free but they would get 
whatever they wanted for free. But if you didn't work, you'd still get everything for free. So everything would be free. So there'd be no incentive to work. But then he came out and made these ignorant statements like it's violence um, and you're a slave if you work. So on one hand, he said in the first movie, if you are taxed, you know, you're a slave basically to the government, which, you know, I, I, I agree with and you're being extorted and and whatnot. But then he started going into this uh, enslavement and he brought up another word. Let me see if I can find it. I just have so much information um, that what was the word that he coined? And I don't know if this was an actual word or, or saying that he came up with or um, it existed beforehand. But it, it, it was basically that, you know, people were being abused by the system um, because they were working for money. Now, when you work for money, obviously you have the choice. Now, he was saying you don't have a choice because you have to work to live. And that's true. You do have to work to live. Technically, I guess you could go out in the woods and kill animals and live in a fucking tent somewhere. So you could do that. But if you want to live within society inside a house and be able to buy food and pay bills, then yes, you have to have a job, but it's not like you're forced into a specific job. Now, these are things that I think are coming in the future, but as of right now, you're not forced into a specific job. You have the opportunity to choose your career. Now you might not make it in the career that you want to, depending upon, you know, how hard it is. Like if you want to be an actor, you know, that's something you may not be successful in, but that doesn't mean that, you know, you don't have the option to choose your career to quit your job, to get another job, um, and all of these things. So, to not only say that you're a slave, he also said it was violent. That structural violence is what he said. So I tried to look at this, to be honest, as much as possible from the point of view of an open mind. I really do, because I want people to look at what I say with an open mind, even though most of what I say is true. Um, Not that I'm saying anything I say is not true. It's a lot of it's opinion, but a lot of it's just fact as well. So of course I want people to be open-minded when they listen to me and not just get mad. And you have those people that right away, you know, you criticize the U S and I'm not really just criticizing the U S I'm criticizing government in general. Although you know, the U.S. has done a lot of bad things because of the power that they've had. I think that, and I've said this before, if they were a less powerful country and there was, you know, if they weren't a superpower, then they wouldn't have done as much of they as they've done. Um, but since they are, you know, power corrupts. But to, um, you know, in looking at this, I wanted to look at it from that point of view of just kind of, okay, let me think about this for a minute now. <laughs> and, you know, it, it it's really ridiculous and I think they're nuts. But, and initially, I, I guess I thought that as well, but... I still um, tried to do that. So 
I thought about, okay, well, how else would things be? Now, they're not just against the monetary system because that's their thing. They, they say they're against the monetary system. But it's not just the monetary system. It's also the um, barter or trading. So that's what they used to do years ago. And people still do it now. You know, kids do it. Even adults do it. I mean, you can go to a gun show and, um, you know, trade your gun for another gun or maybe a gun and some cash or go to a swap meet or something. Um, I believe you can trade stuff there. So, you know, trading still exists at certain places, depending on what the product is, but they don't believe in that neither. And that's where, to me, an agenda comes in. The fact that they don't believe in that. Because if they were just against the monetary system or if they were against the U.S. monetary system. Now, I'm definitely against a central bank. I'm against, you know, being the Fed. So I'm against that. I'm against fiat currency. You know, all of that stuff. And really, I, I, I know it would be hard to do, or at least annoying, but being that gold can be melted um, easily, there's there would be ways to do it. But I think everything should be actual gold and silver, meaning that you don't deal with pieces of paper that are backed up by something because you don't really know that they're backed up by something. We've talked about on the show how they're selling contracts, um, certain companies for gold that they don't even have. So I don't know exactly. You'd, you'd have to be able to verify it. That would be the hard part. So say, you know, you make a gold paper thin, uh, piece of gold um to try to make it like a you know a dollar you know of course it wouldn't be a dollar because it'd be worth a lot more but i mean if you try to make it you know in a certain shape or whatever how would you know it was real i know how to tell on jewelry because it always says the carrot now i guess somebody could fake that and put it on there but usually with jewelry you can tell if it's real because it will say the carrot, you know, 14 carat or 24 carat or 10 carat or whatever, somewhere on the jewelry. If it's not real gold, it won't say that. Now, again, I guess somebody could counterfeit that, but um, there's got to be a way an easy way to tell if something's gold without ruining it. And I know there's one way to, to tell, but I don't know if it's that easy. Um, but anyway, so I don't believe in none of that anyway. So I'm, I'm with them there uh, as far as I'm halfway with them because they say they don't want the monetary system. So you think about that and it's like, okay, Let's go back to if there was nothing, what would you do? And, you know, maybe if you were traveling, you'd go and kill an animal, um, grab some plants. At some point, you might run across a village. Maybe they'd give you a free meal or something. But at some point, they're going to want something. Now, whether it's labor or it's trade or something, they're going to want something for giving you food. And I don't think that that's a, a paradigm, that that's just the reality of how things work, that there's no way around that. Because I'm trying to think of, you know, how else would things work just for the hell of it. I mean, I believe in, you know, volunteerism and all of that and that people are allowed to or should exchange 
you know, as long as it's a fair exchange. And all a fair exchange is is that you both agree to it. And whether you're exchanging gold or exchanging dollars or whatever the fuck you're you're doing, um, you know, exchanging, that's fine. Or if it's work um, for goods or work for money, um, one person is getting something out of it on one side and the other person is getting something out of it on the other side. Now, their uh, whole philosophy there, which comes from this nut, and and I looked up this guy, this this Jacques uh, Fresco. He, he never even graduated high school. He's acting like you know he had some designer jobs, but he got fired from every single one of them because of disagreements. He's never been trained in any of this shit. And he's talking about stuff like he's an economist and whatever. And I'm not saying that you need to go to school to learn stuff. I mean, you can learn a lot of things on your own, but it just, he already sounds kind of nuts. And he's saying how this would work and all of this stuff and how technology would, you know, do all these things. And really the only way, in my opinion, that you could have a society close to that is if everything, 100% of things were robots, meaning that robots did everything. They could fix themselves and they could do any task or build anything that you needed them to do. That way, yeah, people wouldn't have to work. But that's the only way I see it. And I don't know how society would work in that way because someone's going to own the robot. Someone's going to have to buy the material that they're, whatever they're making. um, And then someone's going to have to buy that from them. So uh, how that would work is a whole nother story. But that's the only way that it would even I, I mean I don't know that it would even work that way but at least you could say that people wouldn't have to work because they contradict themselves they kind of say that you know people things don't get done because people don't make a profit off it and then they're talking about people working for free if they if they were really into it so you have this Venus project and this whole whole movement so basically they talk about and i think this is in the third movie they actually get into the city and the building of this uh city and i don't know how much again peter joseph got into this and maybe he met this fucking guy And he somehow got sucked into this idea. I don't know. But something changed along the way. And it might have been that even the second film, that the half of it was really from the first film. And they just, you know, it was too long and he kept it over to the second. But it's something changed there. Um, now, obviously, I don't know him. I've seen a bunch of interviews with him, and that's about as far as I, you know, know about him. So that's really all I can say. But it, it totally, um, you know, if you see this movie, and I'm, I'm leaving stuff out, too, because there were all these little things here and there that he had uh, uh, put in, and he made the government look pretty bad um and brought up a lot of shit so um i could understand them possibly you know threatening him or whatever but maybe he met this guy and he just bought into this fucking idea uh but it makes no sense to me so anyway it's just ridiculous the whole concept so their idea is no trade no nothing it's just free So everywhere you go, it's free, even though people still have to work to produce a lot of these things. Now, they said the technology is so far that it could do a lot of things, but it still can't do everything. 
and I think they're exaggerating on the technology. Also, you'd have to buy all the technology. I mean, I just look at the jobs I've worked at and, you know, the technology that they have. And it's just like, I mean, and they don't have what is the best thing on on the market, you know. But at the same time, you know, they're actually rebuilding their systems. But at the same time, it's, you know, even companies don't get this this type of technology. So, um, you know, I'm sure manufacturers have have uh, better technology and things like that. But my point being is that it seems like they were exaggerating the technology and a lot of it might be prototype. Um, as they talked about this tram that can bring you to China in two hours. So they talked about this city and in this city, like a circle. So you have layers and then they went into kind of the layers of the circle and you know where you had your recreation and you had your residential and i'm trying to find my circle notes and you had your um transportation and all of these different things within this city and the one thing I started to think about one, I mean, this is totally socialist because they're talking about the whole world and they're talking about the resources of the whole world. So that's how they kind of started out with the allocation of resources from the whole world, essentially. Right. So essentially, basically, taking all the world's resources and allocating them to whoever wants them. How are you going to get away with doing that? I have no idea. I mean, the whole thing is just fucking whacked out. Um, Because how would you somehow secure the rights to be able to um, come up with this uh, system and they had different names like monetary market system or social economic uh, economic system. And uh, they had a center hub factory production global resource management system. Um, so basically they wanted to inventory uh, all the resources and track them and then distribute them out, you know, to whoever needed them and all of that shit. Um and then each city would be in this kind of circle thing. They wanted to pretty much eliminate cars. They wanted the em- energy, supposedly, you know, wind, which uh, from what I heard about wind is it just, it shit, it doesn't work. Um, not that it doesn't work, but it doesn't, it doesn't have enough power to do much. Now, I'm not an expert in any of this shit, so I, you know, I could be wrong on that, but if wind was so great, um, you know, why aren't we using it? And I know there's other reasons, but it's pretty easy to fucking set up a windmill and it's pretty cost effective as well. So, um, wind, solar, geothermal, and he talked about how geothermal is the best way and, there's a patent on it by an oil company or something. And see, this is another thing too. Now they talk about the monetary system. They talk about patents and this is where I feel like they have an agenda and it's a socialist agenda because why pick that way to get to your end so you have a goal that you want to get to or to get to your goal so if you have a goal you want to get to there's obviously different ways you can get there theirs is just everything being free and nobody works and all of that shit but 
you know, you could get rid of government, you could get rid of the monetary system as it is now. Um, you could get rid of, if there wasn't a government, you could get rid of copyrights, you could get rid of intellectual property. So all these things like that. And you'd figure that someone who made that first Zeitgeist movie would be more open to something like that than something like this, which is total socialism, although they both deny it. They both say that, no, it's not socialism. And the, the older guy who's nuts um, says that government would have nothing to do with it as well. So how are you going to get all these fucking resources without government and not have a they they kind of he kind of mentioned not having a government to be honest um he kind of slipped that in there so why would that be your um your choice of how to proceed if you wouldn't even want government involved because there's a lot better ways to do it and that's where i think that there's that agenda. Now, in an interview, Peter Joseph couldn't really answer how they would exactly do it. You know, oh, the people would do it and they'd all get together online or something or whatever, or they, it's, they couldn't do it and they know it. It's just, it's not possible. Now, on a small scale, if you took one city, maybe you could do something like that. But it's not going to work because nobody is going to fucking work. That's the whole thing. That's why socialism and communism do, don't work. Because people need incentives. I'm not saying every single person. I mean, I do this show for free because I'm trying to get out the ideas of freedom. But, I mean, I also have a full-time job. So you know, I, I can afford to, to do this for free. Um, but most people are not going to work for free for something like that, no matter how much they believe in it. And, and the ideas were, well, you know, there'll be less jobs. So uh, essentially what I got from them is that there'll be monopolies. Um, everybody will have the same thing. So for example, in order to cut down on the amount of jobs so people wouldn't have to work as much. And you could do this now, but why would you want to? But they think competition is violence as well. So if you have a car company and somebody else has a car company, that's violence. How they come to that fucking conclusion is insane and asinine as far as I'm concerned, but... That's the conclusion they come to. So anyway, they wouldn't want competition. So how would you have products without competition? You'd have monopolies. And by having monopolies, you'd have less employees, which would be less jobs, which would be less people that would have to work them. So everything would be the same. There'd be small variations, like they mentioned something and how, oh, you could get it in these different colors. But essentially, everything would be the same. So everybody would have the same car. Maybe you'd have a different color or something. Everybody would have the same house. And then all these things come up like, what about somebody that wants a big house? What about somebody who wants more because they feel that they do a job, that they do more work? No, this would be total socialism. This would be textbook like socialism from what I understand it. And 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 um from a conversation last night, maybe I'm not understanding socialism correctly, but uh or communism, but everybody would be the same. Literally. They'd have the same house, um, the same car the same furniture. I mean, there'd be slight variations, but everything would be the same. And everything would be free. So it would be a total social society. And how they can say 
it would not be socialist is is crazy. So they talked about placing in circles and or in belts um as an example, you know, their city and having or you know, they'd have all these cities like that with a tram. They'd only have automated driverless cars. You wouldn't be able to drive a car because, you know, there's too many accidents. And trust me, that's where things are going too. And they're not going there because there's too many accidents. They're going there because of control. And and they're they're trying to already start this in California, and we'll get to this later. Um, and, and this is where some of the scary stuff comes in because there's certain things that if the government pulls, you have some control where you can fight back. And I'm not – and when I say fight back, I don't even mean literally like actually fighting physically – but where, you know, you can ignore it or uh, not follow their laws or whatever. But there's certain things that you can't. And and we're going to get to that. And that's when it's like we're, we're really fucked. Because the things that you can rebel against or stand up to... Um, and stop them from doing it or if it's something that they have to catch you doing it or something like that um in order to enforce it but when it comes to things like your electricity and you know co2 and your electric bill goes from a hundred dollars a month to eight hundred dollars a month what are you going to do about it then and there's a couple things, but there's not much. Um, so we'll get into that a little later. But this is totally, and this is what I think this this is. And I don't know if there was he was told to do this or what. Who knows? You know, to me, Based on the stuff that I've read and government documents and the shit that the government's done that's been proven and the lies from the media and all that shit, you know, anything's fucking possible. Literally anything is possible. Now, there's some things I tend to, you know, a lot of things, I guess, that I I don't think everything's a conspiracy. Um... I don't automatically jump to that. Like I believe that the U S landed on the moon and stuff like that. But, you know, people that question stuff, even stuff that I think it's kind of crazy to question. I don't really blame them because when the government lies about all this shit and you can prove that they lied about it and we can prove that they lied about so many things in the past I mean, how do you believe them or trust them? How do you believe when, like with the police, all this, all the information when it comes to crimes, they come from the police. They're the final word on it. They're, that's where the, the media gets their story. That's where everybody gets, that's the mayor, the uh, fucking um whoever else uh, the county commission or city council or uh, the representatives or congress if it goes that high um you know that's where they get their information from so to believe any of that um i don't just automatically believe it anything that comes from po- well cuz everything comes from pretty much politicians and the police, I mean, you have stories that you have witnesses there or whatever that will um, bring stuff up. But if they're just agreeing with everybody else, you know, who knows if somebody got to them. And it depends what it is, really. But the point being is that it's hard to believe anything that you hear um, when it comes to uh the negative stuff so or the government being the hero or the police being the hero or whatever um anyway so so who knows what happened with this guy 
and m- maybe he just fell in love with socialism. But I, I think it's more than a coincidence that this totally relates in a lot of ways to Agenda 21, which was what it originally was in the 90s. Um, I think George Bush, H.W. Uh, Bush, had signed uh, off on Agenda 21, which this is pretty much the agenda. It's not called Agenda 2030. It's called, um, I have the document up right here. It's actually called, and I don't know if they even changed the name because it, it originally had 2015 in the title and it still does. Uh, how come I don't have the title page? Oh, I'm on the wrong. Fuck. Oh, no, this is it. The General Assembly. Transforming Our World, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. It used to be called something else. Um, 2015 and beyond something. Oh, okay. This is what it was because it says adopts the following outcome document of the United Nations Summit for the adoption of the post the post 2015 development agenda. So that's what I had originally read and talked about on the air. And that went a lot further as far as what it actually said. I mean, it straight up said and it pretty much says it in here, but it doesn't. Um, It doesn't spell it out but i mean it infers but it said the rich countries are going to pay for the poor countries you know shit like that it got into freedom and really positive freedoms and how people have the right to walk down the street and be safe um which you don't have that right um because it's a you don't have any right that's a, a positive right um, because what would that mean? That would mean that somebody has to what? You get your own personal bodyguard. And that's what they use for anti, you know, some of the anti-gun stuff too, that, well, you have the right to walk down the street and be safe or not get shot. So no one has the right to own a gun. Like that's the kind of shit that they use. But anyway, um, that's probably why they rewrote it the way they did because, they didn't want to be as blatant. And then you have the commercial that I played. I think I played it again last week, but I played it before that had a bunch of celebrities that supported this. And it's just, they probably haven't even read it and fucking morons anyway. So that's what it's called now, but it's pretty much the same thing as it was. Um, back when they had agenda 21 or at least the same concept the same idea and really i think it's going to affect the the u.s more than any other country in that they're going to use it to take away even more freedoms and we'll get into um that a little later but I don't know, you know, these these cities and the driverless cars and the trams and the transportation and the energy and all of this stuff, the setup of the cities and the total socialism is very similar to what the UN um, is trying to do with their agenda, of course, and they're trying to do it all over the whole world. It has to do with resources. It's very similar. The only thing is that the UN doesn't mention anything about eliminating money or anything like that. But besides that, it's very, very similar. So to say that they didn't um, now I don't believe this was written, even the 2015 one, um, when he put this together, but Agenda 21 was. So 
or I don't know if the UN a representative from the UN came to them and they talked to them uh, based on, or they they went and uh, went and tried to seek out somebody from the UN based on Agenda Twenty One because that's kind of what they they set up. And again, it's just crazy that he goes from the first movie, and I suggest you watch the first movie and even watch the others to see, just see the difference, or at least watch the second one. But it's crazy how it goes from, you know, one thing to the other. And I don't know uh, really what the fuck happened with that. So, but um, anyway. The Zeitgeist is just a movie, though. So really, in the big scheme of things, it doesn't make a fucking difference. Now, the UN is a group, I believe, it's either 193 or 139. I think it's 193. I think I'm dyslexic. But um, the UN is an actual group of countries, of nations that are trying to implement agendas and they are scary. You know, a movie, you know, who gives a fuck? So people, you know, see a movie and maybe they get some ideas, but it, it's it's meaningless in the big scheme of things. Now, the UN, that's another story. And that's where we get to the threats to our freedom and huge ones, in my opinion. And it's already starting to happen with California. Now, this has been going on slowly for years, um, even here in Las Vegas with money from the government. Um, And actually, I'm going to take a quick break and we'll talk about it when we come back. But I'll start with uh, when we come back with the federal government and how they control the local cities with their grants and things like that. HUD being one of the big ones and that being one of the ones that uh, closely affects Agenda 21 because it has to do with, you know, housing and urban development and all of that stuff so we'll play a clip and when we come back we'll talk about that and get all into the UN and their 2030 agenda so we'll be right back nonpartisan liberty for all.com This man wants to change the economy as we know it to solve the ills of society. The Venus Project is a veritable blueprint for the genesis of a new world civilization based on human concern and environmental reclamation. It proposes a holistic social design in which automation and technology would be intelligently integrated to maximize the quality of life rather than simply profits. Undesirable behaviors are products of long exposure to detrimental environments. If we wish to surpass the limitations of our present day society, such as war, hunger, poverty, and bigotry, we need to make changes and arrange society very differently. Most of our problems today are technical, but we still look for solutions through political means, in a monetary system. We have the resources. Money is an interference because it limits our ability and it limits our dreams. Modern society has access to highly advanced technologies and can make available food, clothing, housing, medical care, a relevant educational system, and at the same time develop a limitless supply of renewable, clean energy, such as geothermal, tidal, solar, wind, and more. The solutions lie in the intelligent and humane application of science and technology 
and more appropriate resource management in order to supply goods and services to everyone equitably, enabling the entire global population a very high standard of living. We don't have enough money to accomplish this, but we do have enough resources. If we initiate what Jacques Fresco calls a resource-based economy, this is where all goods and services are available to everyone without money, credit, barter, or servitude of any kind. For this to be attained, all resources must be declared as the common heritage of all the Earth's people. Imagine the possibilities of an unprecedented mobilization. And of course, that was another thing that they wanted to do uh, that was similar, was rid the world of poverty as well. And that's one of the big goals of the UN. So they're very, very similar, um, as I had said, except one can actually happen and the other, fortunately, is there's no way it's going to happen. Of scientific and technical alliances toward problem solving without the interference of money or politics to initiate global unification and restoration. The Venus Project would start with a systems approach to city design using highly effective construction methods emphasizing the conservation of resources. The first city would be a huge research center making automated systems for the next city. It would be a place where we would disseminate information as to what sustainability really means for the future. The aim of the city is to constantly maximize existing and future technologies with the sole purpose of enhancing all human life and protecting the environment. The society I'm talking about is global cooperation, where all the nations work toward improving the lot of humankind. Now, why do that? Because the smarter people are, the richer and more secure everybody is. We have the tools at hand to design and build a future that is worthy of the human potential. It is imperative that we continue the process of social experimentation in order to transcend our present limitations and truly create the beginning of a civilized age. I have seen the first Zeitgeist film, and I was skeptical. I did spend a lot of time in conspiracy theories when I was younger, but largely outgrew it. They were fun to look at, but none of them are valid enough to lend any credibility to. Part 3 I agreed with in part, but I do disagree with the idea that you don't have to pay taxes. Part 1 I agreed with at first, but I brought these ideas up to fellow atheists who showed me why this was total crap. I largely put that film behind me and ignored the sequel, knowing the reliability of the first one. A friend of mine I knew from way back got suckered into the whole Zeitgeist Addendum movie. He started telling me that I should watch it and get down on the Venus Project too. As he explained it, it sounded like listening to a Karl Marx audiobook. People are forced to use money! When you hit that punch clock at work, you're entering a dictatorship. We need to get rid of money because it exploits people down with evil capitalism. So I watched the movie, and it was pathetic. Every possible and conceivable error you can make in economics was made in this movie. 
planned obsolescence, predatory pricing, free market monopolies and cartels, conflating economic systems as Keynesian, and conflating government actions as capitalism. I've noticed that a few of my other friends also got suckered into this crap, so I spent my time exposing why the RBE is not a viable solution to their problems. Later, Zeitgeist 3, Moving Forward, came out, so I watched it. Supposedly, it was supposed to be what Zeitgeist Addendum was supposed to be if it wasn't rushed and laced with conspiracy theories. I noticed something this time. I felt like I was being hypnotized. The sad music, the creepy bell sound, the soothing voice that's explaining all the world's harsh realities. It became apparent that I wasn't watching a documentary. I was watching a manipulative propaganda film. The eerie music and violent, horrific imagery was a play on my emotions. Peter Joseph began trying to make me feel guilty for being a part of this system. He begins to show me that I was indoctrinated into this system and that I was meant not to feel guilty, but I should feel guilty if I wasn't indoctrinated. I am a brain-dead zombie who manipulates people for my well-being. I have no choice but to do this evil stuff, but there is only one solution to get out of it. Join us. Another thing that bothered me about the movement was the organizational structure. The organizational structure appears to be a well-hidden pyramid-shaped structure. The leaders, of course, are Peter Joseph Marola, running the activist arm, underneath Jock Fresco and Roxanne Meadows, who are in charge of organizing the planning and the political aspects of it. What they say goes. Under Marola, a group of mostly anonymous global administrators who issue bans on their forms with no appeal process whatsoever. We have seen users get banned for questioning the aspects of the Venus Project, even outside of the forms of, press, of oppressive confines. Explanations given for these bans usually consist of accusing the person of being a troll. Virtually anyone who le has legitimate concerns with the Venus Project are also labeled as trolls. Fresco and Meadows are the gatekeepers. They are the ones with all the answers to all of mankind's problems. They are the quintessential guru of the group, and they decide and dictate the direction of the movement. And Marola is the attack dog who keeps the others in line. A scholarly critic, Muertos, offered a challenge to the Zeitgeist movement to read the book Seeing Like a State. Their reaction was to label him a troll because they didn't like his choice of words describing them and demanding to know what his magical system for fixing the world was. And I received an almost identical reaction when I issued my challenge as well. Their opposition of trolls is much the same as Scientology's suppressive persons concept, wherein any person who criticizes Scientology is labeled a suppressive person and people are to disassociate themselves from them. They circulate propaganda within the group to show that anyone with this label is deemed unfit to participate. When they do decide to confront you, one of the many charges against you are, what have you ever done to help humanity? I contend this is a form of Melu control that the Zeitgeist movement is also guilty of. Needless to say, I can hardly contrast the Zeitgeist movement's actions in the same light as Heaven's Gate, Jonestown, Scientology, Children of God, and many other abusive cults. But the only reason why is because their actions are purely limited to internet activity. If these people were to build a city, I would be more concerned about the group's actions. Nonpartisan liberty for all. Call in at 702-470-7664 or Skype in. Username, nonpartisan liberty for all. Nonpartisan liberty for all, and we are back talking about Zeitgeist and how it so closely resembles the UN's originally uh, titled Agenda 21. Now, the I just call it Agenda 2030. Um, but the full name, what's the full name again? Oh, jeez. Is Transforming Our World to 2030 
agenda for sustainable development. Anytime you hear sustainable development, you know that that's not good. <laughs> that's like a word, sustainable, especially when it's followed by development. Uh, it's it's not good. So uh, before I had went to break, I had mentioned that they're already controlling things on the city level or county level, probably everywhere already, at least on in big cities or a certain uh, amount of the population, uh, cities with a, a certain population. Because in Las Vegas, I started looking at uh, budgets a couple years ago and saw all the money they got from HUD. And essentially what you have to do to get money from HUD is they, it, it, I don't know in general, but at least for the money that they were getting, there, there were different grants. So you had to meet specific criteria on each one of these grants and they were very specific on what you could do with them. And I believe you had to present the project beforehand and they'd approve it and you could only use it for that. And they had a lot of control. Basically, they had all the control over what you did with it. I mean, you just presented something to them, but it, it was already described like this has to be for such and such a project of this type. And I think that year, I think it was like 600,000 or, you know what? It might've been 6 million for Clark County. I can't remember. It was, it was a couple years ago. It was a lot of money, though. I do remember that. So they're already trying to control, you know, things like urban planning and stuff like that on a federal government level. And they do that with everything at this point because they have all these departments. If you've been watching the news at all, which I try to avoid, but I caught some of it before the show to see... You know, sometimes I'll look at the news and see how they present a story and what bullshit they put into it or whatever. But, of course, everything's Trump now. His cabinet, I guess he's going on a tour, the Trump tour. It's just it's like 24 hour fucking Trump on the news channels. So they were uh, talking about his cabinet, but. If if you look at his, you know, cabinet, for example, you have all those departments and all those departments give money to states and cities and uh, they give grants and things like that. So what they do is they're able to control. They did this with Common Core, which is t took over the educational system is they said, okay, well, if you follow these rules related to your uh, curriculum at school, then we'll give you such and such amount of money. And they do that with all these different things. So they're, they're controlling the states anyway. Um, and I remember years ago with Nevada, the, um, the drinking – uh, the legal limit was like 1.0 instead of 0 0.08. Like it was like literally two points higher. And they said they were going to withhold federal money for the highways. And, you know, you think about stuff like that and think, well, shouldn't the states be self-sustainable? But I don't think the states are allowed to be self-sustainable based on the fact that the federal government, and I don't know a lot about this, I'm just speculating, but I know that the federal government takes a certain amount of tax from the state. So depending on how much they take from the state, 
they may not be able to be uh, self-sufficient. They may need that money from the federal government. And you don't always get what you pay in back because then that would kind of make no sense. What happens is, you know, it might end up in, in a state that, you know, is broke or whatever. So that whole setup is something I, I'd, I'd have to look into more as far as how the federal government works with the states when it comes to the collection of taxes, um, any taxes that the state collects that goes to the federal government. But in theory, they should be able to be self-sustainable. Then they wouldn't need the federal government at all. Um, but obviously they're not in any state because it seems like all states need money from the government. So in this agenda 2030, and I talked a little about it before, I've talked about Agenda 21 before, but in relation to Zeitgeist, and, and that's why I think, you know, Zeitgeist was almost a propaganda film for the UN in, in a way. Not the first one, but part of the second one and definitely all of the third one. That went into all the detail of the city and whatever. Because one of the things that they want to do is build these cities where you have these uh, high-rise, small high-rise apartments and you live where you work and there's no cars and it's all public transportation and uh, things like that. Um, I'll go through. There's 17 what they call sustainable goals. Now, basically, I look at this as... One thing, this is an agenda that they're basing off of resources and CO2. And I don't know how what you breathe out it can be destroying the environment and then they want taxes for it. Anytime, you know, something like that makes me very skeptical when they talk about wanting taxes for it. And it's also something that you exhale. But anyway, um, and plants breathe in. So um, what? either way, the way they're handling it is pretty fucked up. But I think what they're doing is they're exploiting it, obviously, to push an agenda. And that's what they do. That's what the government does. So they're saying, okay, because of this, um, we're going to exploit it to do all these other things. Now, a lot of them make no fucking sense when it comes to issues being resources and, you know, suppose of, suppose of um, climate change and, and CO2 emissions, but they get in, in into ending poverty. So it, the, the 17 sustainable goals are end poverty in all its forms everywhere, end hunger, and this is in the world. This is for the whole world. End hunger, achieve food security and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture, ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages, ensure inclusion and equi equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. Um, and I think that applies more to uh, other countries, to be honest. But ensure availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. Ensure access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, and a modern energy for all. Promote st st uh, sustained inclusive and sustainable. I don't know how many times I've said sustainable since I started reading this economic growth, full and productive employment and decent work for all. Um, that's very subjective. A lot of these things um, build resilient infrastructure. 
I, what does that mean? Promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization and foster innovation. Again, they, these are very, you know, they do go into it in more detail, but it's just kind of, I don't know, reduce inequality within and among countries. Make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. And that's one of the ones that uh, we'll go into in more detail. Ensure sustainable consumption and product patterns. Take urgent action to combat climate change and its impacts. That's where the, of course, carbon tax comes in. And and I think that's really what's going to fund this if it happens and it's it's definitely going to happen here. Whether it's going to happen in all these other countries is another story, and whether it would even work in all these other countries is another story. But what's going to fund it is um, the carbon taxes, if they ever get them through, which they will at some point. Ensure sustainable competition and production patterns Take urgent action. Okay, sorry, I did that twice. Conserve and sustainably use the ocean, seas, and marine resources for sustainable development. That was like sustainable twice. Protect, restore, and promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems, sustainable management forests, combat decertification and halt and reverse land degradation and halt biodiversity loss promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development provide access to justice for all and build effective accountable and inclusive institutions at all levels and that's kind of part of the other thing with the cities as well so the biggest thing to them is to end poverty now of course if they end poverty Who the fuck is going to pay for it? Well, they've said in the first uh, one, the 2015, that the rich countries are going to pay for the poor countries. So with that being said, countries like the U.S. are supposedly going to be giving money to all these other countries that are poor and can't afford it. Now, first of all, for for all these third world countries, and and I don't mean to be mean or uh, uncaring, but I don't believe that it's other countries' responsibilities. And I believe this whole thing, and the United States, I think, is partially behind it, is a way to to get carbon taxes funded or passed and get carbon taxes to come in and to be able to implement a lot of this stuff in the United States so they can continue their uh, control where they take the point we're at now and then just continue more control over the people especially with these uh, sustainable communities like they talked about in Zeitgeist because it does a lot of things. And and, and as I said, they're already starting this in, in California, and we'll talk a little about that. But the UN history is... The only purpose of the UN, which was started after World War II, was um, it was created to prevent another world war. That's it. At some point, and this is the, the whole idea of giving people power and having them take more of it. And that's what happens. So in Agenda 21... That's where they had, so it was, the idea was have the high-rise small apartments because, of course, you can't afford the electric bills because of the carbon taxes. Live, you know, where you work. 
get rid of cars, everybody take public transportation, and they're justifying all these things based on CO2. But it's really about control. Because if you look at, if you think about that, so you build these cities and, you know, you design them from, maybe not totally design them from scratch, but you can implode buildings and rebuild and whatever. But if you're able to have you know, big high rise buildings with small apartments where you're able to keep thousands of people. And I say keep uh, because I didn't mean to say that, but that's really what they're doing. Um, Thousands of people. What that does is it, it does a lot of things. So one, they don't have cars, so they can't get away. They can't go anywhere. They have to take public transportation so they're not free to just go where they want. You build in, of course, a surveillance grid, which we pretty much have anyway. And some of the bigger cities, it's very sophisticated. Like London, I think, is the is the biggest. Then you have New York and you have Boston, the downtown areas. I don't think it's the whole city, but I don't know. You build in a surveillance grid, you have all these people in a concentrated area. It's easy to control them. It's easy to watch them. You have, you know, your same thing, a police grid. And as far as, you know, resources, it's a lower amount of resources, less stores. You know, you have everything right near there and you try to keep people kind of consolidated within that area. I mean, they don't have cars, so, you know, you have some recreational uh, part of it. This is exactly what they were talking about in Zeitgeist with the, you know, a recreational circle, uh, this circle, that circle. Um, So you have all that. But um, what happens is that people can't afford... Or, or the majority of people won't be able to afford big houses anyway if they do what they want to do, which is hire the carbon tax so fucking high that you can't get electricity without paying a ridiculous amount of money. And it's it, see, that's why to me it's all bullshit because they're using that to exploit it and to take away more freedoms. And now they're trying to do it in California. Um, There was a video, a YouTube video, which, and and I went to their website. It's the, uh, shit, I have it down here. The G, they're not even part of government. The GCAG. No, the SCAG, and it's a government website, but supposedly they said they're not part of government, that they're doing all this urban planning for Southern California. And and that's what they're doing is they're trying to get rid of cars. They're doing bike lanes. They're uh, trying to get more um, public transportation and public transportation lanes They're building more of these, you know, they call them the stack and pack apartments uh, all over the place. And then I think about like how I mentioned that in Las Vegas, all these venture capitalists, they did it for the price to go up, but they bought all the houses, um, the majority of them. So there wasn't a lot on the market and then they drove the price up. So they could take those and fucking implode them if they wanted to, um, depending upon, you know, if they owned like a bunch in a grid and then build that kind of housing, because they were talking about 
not wanting, and I didn't just hear this in California, I believe I heard it someplace else too, not wanting uh, single family housing at all anymore. That everything was going to be, I guess, either when I think of non single family housing, I think of like duplexes, but I think more either they're talking more about apartments or townhouses or probably more, you know, high rise apartments is most likely what they're talking about because they can say the other thing that they can say, which is which is such bullshit, because you look at like the state of Nevada. We have 88 percent of the state is owned by the federal government, and it's just barren land it's desert and we have so much land in this country but they want to consolidate everybody into cities now with the internet so many people now can work from home fuck if i could make money doing this i could work from home and they don't need to be anywhere near a city, but they don't want people out in the country away from the grid because then they cannot watch them. This is where we're fucking going. It's, this is not a conspiracy. This is not, uh, me being paranoid. This is totally what it is. And I played the, uh, the clip, and you can you can go look for it. Just look up. Um, I'll actually post it on the uh, go to uh, Facebook nonpartisan liberty for all. And um, I'll post it right now. Actually, um, it's called Agenda 21. The movie The Mega Cities are coming. And these are actual meetings that people are filming about the urban planning going on in California. Now, California is ahead of everybody else because they're very fucking communist and socialist and whatever. But it's other cities are to come. And I saw one thing where it had Las Vegas listed. Now, I don't know what that was, um, but I did see something that had Las Vegas listed, although it'd be pretty hard to do the same type of things because the type of city it is with the casinos and everything. But that doesn't mean that they couldn't turn the whole city into like the strip if they wanted to, like a downtown area. That's what that fuckhead Tony Shea was trying to do over uh, the head of Zappos. And I call him a fuckhead because he had his people out there telling uh, Cop Block that they couldn't hand out flyers his security people, his security people have no authority to tell people what they can do on public streets, but they tried to tell, uh, people from Las Vegas cop block that they couldn't hand out flyers that, and they were like, know your rights flyers. So he was buying up, uh, all of this, uh, all these leases from people buying them like from under them and stuff like that and was trying to totally uh redo the downtown area into that type of place where um there was some idea about even cars car sharing and i heard about that as well like uh oh millennials want like car sharing and that whole thing and um, stuff like that. And you know what? A car to me it, it is a symbol of individuality. It just, it is. And things are moving more towards the collective. And both of these are totally collectivist uh, movements, whether you're talking about the Zeitgeist and the uh, Venus Project, or you're talking about uh, agenda 21 um and agenda 21 don't forget if the U- if the us pays money to these countries that's where's that money coming from well it's coming from extortion money 
where they extorted our fucking money. I'm paying over $20,000 in taxes this year. There's no doubt, even with the refund. Okay? And I don't make over $100,000 a year neither. Just to be clear. So, and and that, let me just clarify that that's, you know, that includes everything. That includes Social Security, FICA, and federal taxes, not just federal taxes. Luckily, in the state of Nevada, we don't have state taxes. Because if we did, I'd be paying more. So, I'm going to be paying for people in some other country because they have fucking five kids. And first of all, what do you, you know, I, I know it's hard to, and I hate doing this. I, I really do. But because it's hard to judge people when you're not in their shoes. I'm not over in any of these third world countries um, growing up and dealing with whatever they have to deal with and all of this stuff, especially in the ones that um, they're taking kids and, and, you know, with the warlords and all that shit. And you know what, though? Then on the other side of that, I don't know how much of that to fucking believe. And that's where this whole thing with the media, because you have to put things in perspective as well. And I did a show about that. Like people see things on the media and think they happen, you know, 10 times a day. And like a kid gets kidnapped and they won't let their kids go outside and play. So I don't know just because I see something on the media that and it happens. That it happens all the time or it's epidemic or it's, you know, one percent of the kids end up in fighting in in these fucking with these warlords or uh, how many people shit like this happens to. I do know that the U S government is over in Somalia, basically fighting a war that they really never bring up. But let's take any one of these countries um that would be considered a third world country because if they're talking about the whole world um there's countries in south america that are considered third world countries not all of them i think guyana might be um i'm not sure you know of course brazil is not um venezuela is all fucked up now um after you know, Chavez and communism. But of course, you know, and Chavez, as far as I know, didn't kill a bunch of people neither. But Bernie Sanders, he'll do the right, you know, socialism, whatever. Um, Like they said, you know, well, he'll do it a different way where, you know, people won't end up fucking broke and uh, without toilet paper and food and starving to death. So anyway, I I mean, Venezuela is, it's got to be a third world country at this point, but you know, I don't know, pick a fucking country. Basically you have people that, and again, I don't know how many, but if you live in a fucking third world country, if you live in a country where there's no food or there's all these things that can happen. What the fuck are you having kids for? And I, I, I'm sure it's hard to get birth control and condoms there. I guess I, I don't know. Um, then d- don't be fucking anybody. You know, if you can't get an abortion. Or you can't get a morning after pill. I'm fucking serious because I'm trying not to come off like I'm an asshole because I probably am. Because I do, in general, I care about the freedom of the world. I don't just care about the freedom of the United States because I'm against governments everywhere. And the United States is not the worst government in the world. Now, they're the fucking sneakiest motherfuckers in the world. 
They're the most two-faced motherfuckers in the world. But they are not the worst government in the world, at least to the people that live here. Now, they may be the worst government in the world when it comes to other countries. Because think for a minute of the rest of the world, at least now. Now, you can go back and you can look at what England did and you could or you could go back, you know, fucking thousands of years and look at stuff like that. But I'm talking about in the past hundred years. When it comes to other countries. And I'm not saying one country. Because the United States has done shit to so many different countries. And I may be missing somebody here. So, um, you know, I'm not an expert historian. But to me, it would seem like the United States has been the worst country when it comes to what it has done to other countries. Now, it's not the worst country in what it's done to people that live here. Um, there's a lot of others that are on that list. However, like I said, it is the most two faced and it is the most, uh, when it comes to, you know, lying and being fake and all of that shit, it's definitely, uh, you know, up there, but what I'm saying, and I, I, of course, I don't believe in taxes and I don't believe in government anyway. But right now, they're extorting me. Now, I don't believe that I should have to pay for the people here that are having a bunch of kids. Never mind somebody in some other fucking country. Why is it, you know, and, and people can say I'm selfish and whatever. You know, I have my own responsibilities. I have uh, my own, you know, other people that I have to take care of. And that's my priority. And you know what? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. This whole collectivist idea or philosophy of, you know, the and I kind of changed the subject a little, but that you know the group is more important than the individual is bullshit. Every individual is important, however, they have to be the ones that have to take care of themselves or, you know, if they have other people to do it for them or I'm fine with charity. Maybe if I didn't get all my money taken away in fucking taxes, you know, I'd send them some money. The reason I don't, I, I try to avoid charities because I don't trust them where the money goes. I'd rather give money directly to people. And I have before. And they didn't even fucking thank me for it, so whatever. But um and you know, I would give money to people directly if I had it to give. But this bullshit that the UN has come up with is basically saying, and the US wants this. Um, the U S wants to use whatever they can to take more control. Now, I don't know if the U S government wants a world government and they think that they're going to be at the top of it, or it's the elites of the world that are running things and they don't give a fuck and they want a world government. I don't know, but that's kind of what, there was something in here and let me go through a couple of these that I marked off that I thought were important that are in this document. So out of these 17 things, right? 
it lists, I don't know, between 7 and 13 or something like that of additional statements. But before I get to that, let, let me just go back to, you know, I don't want people to think because it's not true that I don't give a fuck about anybody that I don't know. But because in general, you know, I do value human life. And I know it's hard for a lot of people. And I know people make mistakes and get in bad situations. And you have people that are just born where they're born and they have no... Uh, it's weird saying that because that's my last name, but they have no control over that. Just like I have no control over, you know, no one has control over where they're born, who they're born to, who their relatives are, none of that. But you do have control over certain things. Now, it's a lot harder when you're in some third world country to get out or to have a, a, a good life. Now, again, I don't even really know how bad things are. And I don't want to know firsthand, to be honest. But I don't know what to believe and what not to believe. Now, I think a lot of the things that they say happens happen. I just don't know. Is this something that goes on all the time? Is this an epidemic? Or is this the media wants you to think this happens all the fucking time? But when it comes to something like this, you can bet that the United States government or the powers that be that run it or run the world for all for for that matter, you know, they have an agenda. This is all about an agenda. No one gives a fuck about the environment. And I mean, government wise. Um, this is all about an agenda. And what's going to happen? I was thinking about this earlier. So you have the reason I don't think you've seen a carbon tax yet and cap and trade besides the fact that, you know, it got voted down. But at this point, when it comes to things like money or food or whatever, that's when people may protest. That's when you may have people in the streets. So if the government can convince enough people that this is necessary, that's why they call people that are climate change deniers, you know, crazy. I've heard they should be locked up, you know, all this stuff. Why do you think they're doing that? They're doing that because they want to eliminate anybody who denies man-made climate change or at least climate change caused by CO2. Because if everybody believes that it comes from CO2, they're not going to be protesting the tax. Now, they might be pissed off that they have to pay it, but they're not going to be protesting it. Now, if you have the majority of the people who don't believe that shit, they're going to be protesting it if their electric bill is going from $100 a month to $600 a month. And I don't know how much it's going to go up, but from what I've heard, it's going to go up a lot. Where that's the other thing where you get people into... 400 square foot fucking apartments because you can't afford the electric bill in a house or you can't afford the electric bill in an apartment unless you know you make a lot of money you're the fucking pretty well off 
So really what that does, which is so fucked up because this is what Obama wanted, right, to help the, uh, well, you'll get credits and whatever and you'll be able to deduct it and all this bullshit. Um, and that probably never would have happened. But that's why they want to push it. They keep shoving it down people's throats that climate change is caused by CO2. And that's why I don't I, I, I don't believe it. Now, it might be true. I just I don't believe anybody who has an agenda to push ridiculous taxes is um that's trying to ram this shit down people's throats i i don't you know right there it tells me why would you even have to do that because and why would you do i mean why the taxes oh well the taxes are going to stop them from using it no they're not It's because you want to be able to control people. Plus, you want more of their fucking money. They keep taxing everything, and they'll continue to tax everything. Just like they'll keep passing laws, and they'll continue to pass fucking laws. So let me go over these, um, which I thought was important. So... Um, some of them I actually copied over and some of them I'll have to refer back to the, uh, document. So just bear with me, but the first couple I copied over. So number 10, which was, um, no, oh, but I didn't write what the fucking rule was. So that was stupid. So <laughs> let me go back to the document. Um, although I did have it earlier in my document, but it's easier doing it this way. So number 10 was reduce inequality within and among countries. Meaning, you know, the same shit here, like uh, everybody should be equal and blah, blah, blah. And they're not supposedly. And yes, of course, there's discrimination that goes on and there's racism that goes on, but not to the extent that... Um, think they want to present it because again it fits into their agenda um so the ones i wanted to look at was the okay so one of them is the implement implement the principle of special and diff differential treatment for developing countries in particular, least developed countries in accordance with the World Trade Organization agreements. Now, I don't know what the World Trade Organization agreements are, but when they get involved, it's not a good thing. Um, usually, they try to lend money to take control of countries when they can't pay them back. Um the other one was encourage official development assistance and financial flows, including developed countries, African countries, small island developing states, and landlocked developing countries in accordance with their national plans and programs. So that going along with the main thing um, about inequality kind of i don't know um this one i actually had a lot of uh a lot of things number 11 so for number 11 ah shit i passed it So number 11 was make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. So here's where the city shit comes in that I'll get to. Where, uh, well, that I talked about from Agenda 21, but I'll talk about specifically with California. 
um, and post that on the nonpartisan liberty for all page. That's what I was going to do. I kept going to the internet and then kept forgetting what the fuck I was going to do. Um, but I don't want to take away my, um, focus on, on this. So let me go to these first. So by 2030, and this is probably number 11 is one of the more dangerous ones as far as how it's going to affect people. And this is where I'm talking about with things like electricity, that's something that you can't really control. The, you can buy actual um, solar power generators. I didn't know they existed. I had found out that they did. Um, I think they're like a thousand dollars. You can't run your whole house off of solar power generators, but you can run, you know, it's like you plug in a bunch of things to it. You can run like your refrigerator and say your TV or something. Um, so if your electricity got shut off or wasn't on or whatever, and I don't know how you'd, uh, unfortunately in Las Vegas during the summer, it's ridiculously hot. I don't know how, you could get your air conditioner powered by the generator. I don't know that you could because it's not that type of generator from what I understand. Well, I think you can buy one that's more expensive um, because I don't know a lot about generators, but the way I understood the gas ones is that, you know, it would be hooked up like to your house, to your, um, circuit board or whatever, or something like that. And it would just power your whole house until it ran out. But these ones, at least the cheaper ones were set up. So you just, uh, would plug everything into it. And if you could run, you know, extension cords, you just keep it outside and just keep getting the power from the sun. So I want to get one, in, you know, in case they're, you know, for emergencies. But I was looking at ways to totally get off the grid as far as get off the, you know, power companies. Because that's really the only thing I think that you need. Um, You know, of course, you need food and stuff like that. But that's like you can buy, you know, um, your supply where the food that lasts like 25 years or whatever. But you don't need to do that. You can go to the grocery store. But I meant as far as um, getting off of reliance on the government because that's something that they can control obviously which they want to do with the the um carbon taxes so let me read through these real quick by 2030 ensure access for all to adequate safe and affordable housing and basic services and upgrade slums by 2030 provide access to safe affordable accessible and sustainable transportation systems for all improving road safety notably by expanding public transportation with special attention to the needs of those in vulnerable situations women children persons with disabilities and older persons by 2030 enhance inclusive and sustainable urbanization and capacity for participation, integrated and sustainable human settlement planning and management in all countries by 2020, substantially increase the number of cities and human settlements, adopting and implementing integrated uh, policies and plans towards inclusion resource efficiency, migration, and adaptation of climate change, resistance to disasters, and development and implementation in line with the something Sendai framework for disaster risk uh, reduction 2015 to 2030, holistic disaster risk, risk management at all levels. Support least developed countries, including through financial and technical assistance in building, sustaining, 
and resilient buildings utilizing local materials. Now, that's the one that I think is, and we're running out of time here, but the most important. And that's the one that I think we have to worry about the most, along with, of course, carbon taxes. Um, As I mentioned, they're already, you know, doing this in California. So let me talk a little about California. Um. And then I'll post that uh, that Agenda 21, the movie, the mega cities are coming. It's not a movie. It's like 28 minutes long on YouTube on my nonpartisan Liberty for All site. But um, so in California, I mentioned the SCAG. And what they're doing, I pretty much went went through most of it. But they're, you know, they're they're doing it from like they mentioned Santa Monica, Long Beach, a bunch of cities, like a huge area. And the people that were in these meetings um, from the public were saying, well, we're having people leave California. We don't need more housing. We don't need any of this. And they're doing it anyway. Um, they had went and filmed all these buildings that they're building, which are high rise apartments um, all over these parts of L.A. And essentially planning these, uh, like I said, the bike lanes, the getting rid of cars um, and the. Uh, public transportation, also reducing resources. And I don't know if, um, because they do it here, I think they do it everywhere, where they can install something where the power company can actually control it. So when the power grid's on real high, they'll turn it down, um, where it's like an automatic thing that you can have installed and supposedly you get money off your bill for it. I would never fucking do that. It's bad enough that, um, I believe the house I rent has a smart meter. I I don't know what the fuck they look like. It looks like a smart meter. Um, I can't tell to be honest with you because I don't know. I'll have to look up what they fucking look like, but I think it is a smart meter, but that's bad enough. And supposedly that's bad for you as well because of the radiation, so let me just go through uh, my notes real quick and just see if there's anything else that I I missed. Um, of course, one of the things they want is free school. Well, let me go through the uh, agenda part just briefly, and then we'll uh, wrap it up. Um, and and give anything that I missed. So again, as I mentioned, it's based on tw- uh, agenda 21. The biggest thing is eliminating poverty, but in is a quote that says all people must enjoy a basic standard of living, including through social protection systems. S- and, and, and does that sound, you know, familiar to you? Cause that's pretty much what they're pushing here is all people, must uh have a base not a basic standard of living but must have uh what do they call it the um uh fuck i i know everybody knows what i'm talking about too but i can't even fucking think of it a uh a, a, a living wage so pretty much the same thing which is socialism and the whole thing is redistribution wealth from rich to poor countries um a quote from that was we will seek to build strong economic foundations for all our countries sustained inclusive and sustainable economic growth is essential for prosperity this will only be possible if wealth is shared and income inequality is addressed wealth is not just monetary it is resources as well so Meaning, you know, sharing food, power, water, money, 
uh, all of those things they want the world to share with each other, which goes back exactly to <laughs> zeitgeist, except, you know, the money part. So I went through the sustainable goals. Um, and then I went through at least two of the most important ones. So they want u- universal health care. Um, they obviously want the cap and trade and the carbon tax and they want, so they can use that. I'm assuming if they're going to even do it at all, but use that to give to these other countries, but they're not going to give all of it to the other countries. (laughs) They're going to keep some of it for themselves and it's going to go to certain people. Uh, they did say America has too much wealth. Um, They talked about the definition. They didn't talk about it, but somebody else talked about the definition of sustainable development uh, based on what the UN says. So really the UN definition that the the needs are dictated and, of course, wants are not allowed. So they want uh, – essentially what they want is they need to have what they need to have, and it doesn't matter – if we in the United States get what we want, that I took it as essentially all our money should go to them that doesn't go towards like food and rent and living. And based on, you know, taxes, that that could easily happen with the carbon tax of course they could just raise taxes in general at the same time um i mentioned they want free school for everybody including college um and the technocracy the carbon credits cap and trade um john Kerry signed the paris climate accords to reduce CO2 to 25 by 25% by 2025. So how they're going to do that, I don't know. Um, But this plan goes way beyond climate change. And the agenda is really about control. It's about more control over people whether it's people here or the rest of the world, but it's, you know, really about the people here, of course, um, as they continue to build the infrastructure of, you know, the spying, the militarized police, you know, all of that. And they want to continue to take more control because at some point they're going to drop the illusion of freedom. Right now, they're still keeping it to an extent. They're still letting people live somewhat comfortably. But at some point, when they know that a certain amount of people are going to support them no matter what, like I said with the... um, you know, the CO2, for example, and the taxes on that. At some point, there's going to be a total takeover. And this is my opinion. But, I mean, just look at the facts, man. And, you know, it's already it's already happened to an extent. It just hasn't fully happened, but it's not far away. That's why they want the gun so badly. That's why they'd be willing to commit false flag acts for them or false flag acts for terrorism uh, bills that take away your rights. So... That's that's all we have for tonight. Well, actually, I do have a lot more, but that's all we have time-wise for tonight. 
Um, I'm sorry I couldn't get to everything, but I really appreciate everybody tuning in. And maybe we'll, uh, if I have time on another night, go over some of the stuff that I wasn't able to because I believe it is important. And I would definitely check out that document. Just go to the UN website. Uh, maybe I can post a document as well. But go uh, check out the Facebook page, Nonpartisan Liberty for All, and I'll put um, some stuff up there. And check us out, of course, at nonpartisanlibertyforall.com which has links to all our sites anyway. And again, thanks again, everybody. I really appreciate anybody who takes the time to listen. So um, take care and have a good night. Listen to police officers' commands. Listen to what we tell you and just stop. The nation needs to realize that when we tell you to do something, do it. And if you're wrong, you're wrong. If you're right, then the courts will figure it out.